Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2020 and the second part of this experiment where we're taking a look at what would happen if you had the perfect player in Football Manager. So when we did the first part we went five years into the future. The player started out his career in non-league football which for whatever reason has not shown up in his career biography. They have totally whitewashed that out of his history. Um, but somebody made a comment that they wanted to see his landmarks and milestones. So that's what we're taking a look at at the start of this episode for what happened in the last five years. We will then go forward 10 years into the future and we'll have a look at where he's managed to go. If he stays at one club too long, I may intervene and chop him so that he moves to another club. So it doesn't get too boring and too repetitive. But I'm hoping he will move about because his loyalty is set to one, his ambition to 20 it should encourage him to leave at the end of his various contracts. Um, but if you are enjoying this experiment and this little mini-series, do drop a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. And let me know in the comments if there's things like this that you'd want to see that I'm not showing you in a particular episode. So, in the first few years of his time here, looking at his landmarks, you can see all of the competitions that he's won here. The FIFA Club World Cup, Champions League in his first season, and again a few years later and most recently he has also won his third Champions League title with Bayern Munich. You can imagine he's probably going to get quite a few of these through his career. Bundesliga in there as well um, and not too much else. He did also get his international debut in 2021 so he had to wait a little while for that and first international goal came against South Korea. Now if we have a look at his awards there are a lot of them. Uh, over time so if we go down all the way to the bottom you can see he's won all of the team of the week so I mean there are just so many of these uh, best player runner-up top scorer runner-up under 21 men's best player the golden boy we did look at some of these at the end of last episode so I won't dwell on them um, but he is winning an awful lot of stuff there in terms of his competitions this is just where he's finished up we've kind of seen that already released on a free transfer from Man City in 2023 these are slightly more interesting records. You can see he is setting uh, new records in cha European Championship under 21 qualifying. Uh, youngest player to appear in a match. Youngest player to score in a match. Uh, youngest player to score in a match in the Premier League at 15 years and 69 days. Same in the Champions League. Uh, the Friendly Cup as well. I'm not sure why that's on there. He was named the under 20s captain in 2021, which is pretty nice, and broke the Man City record for goals scored in a season with 40. Uh, FIFA Club World Cup record for goals scored in a season with seven. Uh, Club World Cup, not actual World Cup. Um, he, I mean, all of the young age barriers he was always going to break. Highest average rating for Man City as well. Um, record for the fastest goal with 19 seconds against Sweden. That's quite an interesting one. Um, Nations League record for fast I mean that's the same one but with two different tournaments for some reason uh, record for goals scored in a season with England in 15 there um, highest average rating 8.83 the UEFA European Championship record for the fastest goal scoring after 28 seconds against Austria so you can see he's, he's set quite a few individual little records he's not yet England captain or anything major like that he wasn't Man City captain we've still got those kind of things to come in the future but with a rating like this 90 million pound valuation I'm sure he's going to get there soon so let's go 10 years into the future and see how Jen Caldo Jr has got on Rather than go the full 10 years into the future, what I've done is go four years into the future because that is the end of his time with Bayern Munich. So we'll quickly run through his four further seasons with Bayern and then we will see where he is going next and look at his wider past history. But you can see in his second full season with the club, he does win the German Cup and the UEFA Super Cup, scoring both goals against Lyon in that competition. Uh, in the knockout stages, I mean, a huge run of victories. And a shame they lose this Bundesliga game here against Borussia Dortmund. But they do manage to keep going, getting past Eintracht Frankfurt uh, to make the German Cup semi-finals. They beat Arsenal 2-1. He scores in that game. And then 2-1 again at home, but he doesn't score there. A nice 5-1 win here with a hat-trick for him. They beat Lyon as well, 2-1. In the away leg, he scores the winning goal in that game, or what turns out to be the winning goal. 
and then a 2-0 victory at home with the man sent off for Lyon. They get through against Augsburg in the final of the German Cup, opening the scoring there for the penalty spot. And against PSG, a tool draw away from home, setting them up well for the return leg, where they are hammered 4-1. Now, the interesting thing about this game, they've got two away goals in the first leg. They go 1-0 up. And then in the second half, they get a man sent off two minutes in. And then they concede four goals. It's not a pretty picture whatsoever when you've got such a good and strong position. So no Champions League glory this time. But they do win 3-0 against Schalke in the German Cup final. They also win the Bundesliga. A very nice end to their season. But they get knocked out by Arsenal in the FIFA Club World Cup quarter final, despite Jan Caldo Jr.'s goal. But a fantastic unbeaten start to the season, beginning in pre-season and running all the way through every single competition they just keep on winning that draw with Spurs there the only blip until they play Hoffenheim in the final game before the winter break and lose 3-2 to an 87th minute goal um, that is a real sucker punch but they do get past Porto with a 2-1 win despite their late goal um, they get past Schalke on penalties very close there and a 3-0 win over Porto gets them through to the next round um, 4 3 win in the away game against Inter Milan, setting them up well there. Giancaldo Jr. with the first goal, and then a 2 all draw at home, season through to the next stage, into the final of the German Cup as well with a nice 3 2 win. Still only that one defeat in the Bundesliga at this point in the season, and then they beat Barcelona 3 win, 3 1. Giancaldo Jr. with the second goal in that game, a 2 1 defeat at the new Camp, not enough to stop them making it to the final. They beat Borussia Dortmund in the German Cup final 3-2. He scores the first, or the equalising, no, just the first goal for Bayern. They're already 2-0 down at that point, so an excellent recovery to come back and win it. And in the Champions League final, it's a 3-2 victory. You can see they take the lead through Akaret. Harry Kane then scores twice for Real Madrid in one minute to give them the lead. But Giancaldo Jr. turns it around, becomes a Bayern Munich hero, and wins the Champions League yet again. A 28th minute goal and then a penalty early in the second half. Um, an absolutely fantastic result, which means they win the Bundesliga, German Cup and Champions League treble. All in addition to at the earlier part of the season, winning the German Cup um, or the Super Cup rather um, as well. But unfortunately, they couldn't win the European Super Cup, which is odd. Um, oh no, they didn't win the. Ch I was wondering why they were in the Club World Cup, but it's because it's expanded. Anyway, the following season, still at the club, they start with a 3 2, three -two win in the German Cup. He scores there, but then they're crushed by Lazio in the uh, UEFA Super Cup. Excellent start to their Bundesliga campaign again, but uh, a defeat here to Juventus in the group stages. But they're still unbeaten in the Bundesliga until. They beat Milan 3-1 in the Champions League and then lose to Köln 2-1, 87th minute winner for Köln there. And then they follow it up with another defeat to Borussia Dortmund. But it doesn't stop them. They get past Milan in the Champions League, beat Atletico Madrid 3-1 in the Champions League 2 and then get a 2-1 win away from home. Puts them in the semi-finals. They lose to Borussia Dortmund on penalties in the German Cup semi-final. They manage to win 3-1 against Lazio. 2-1 um, in the return match, but then in the final, it's a 3-1 defeat to Real Madrid. Very unfortunate, but you might notice that there is no Jan Caldo Jr. in the team. I believe he gets a pretty big injury around this time, and it means that he's not in any of these games where the goals are still flying in. I think this is the last game that I see him scoring. And then from then on to the end of the season, he doesn't score a single goal because he's out with injury. Uh, so that's his first proper injury, and it means they lose the Champions League. But they do win the Bundesliga, and that is one good thing. Uh, and then into, I think, his final season with the club now. They do lose the Super Cup on penalties. They then start their season off pretty well in the Bundesliga before losing to Köln again. It's always Köln with a late goal, sinking by Munich's unbeaten runs. Um but in the cup competitions, a 2-0 defeat to Juventus. Not sure why it's showing Zebra. Uh, but then a 3-0 win in the home match overturns it. Two goals for Giancaldo Jr. there, helping them 
maintain their run in the Champions League. They then beat Brushy Dortmund 2 0 and 3 0 to get through to the next round into the final of the German Cup as well. They beat Spurs 3 1 in the Champions League semi final first leg, two goals for Giancarlo Jr. And then they sink them 5 1 in the return leg, 8 2 on aggregate to put themselves in the Champions League final. But unfortunately, they lose both of their finals 3 2. Two Borussia Mönchengladbach and then 3-1 to Barcelona. Kylian Mbappe uh, and Coronel helping sink Bayern Munich. So no fair, great farewell for him. He does win the Bundesliga, but it's not enough. And if we just go back and have a look at Jen Caldo Jr., you can see he is planning to join Tottenham on the 1st of July 2028. So I have not intervened here. I've not told him to end his contract. This is the impact of having one loyalty. He's clearly had enough with Bayern Munich. The Tottenham transfer has been arranged and he will be leaving the club. His bravery has dropped down to 19. I'm not going to mess around with that. If he's decided to become less brave, that's totally up to him as he gets older. Um, it might have something to do with his injury, but you can see in terms of his goals, uh, 36 and 48 in his first season. We saw that last time, but then 42 and 53 in all competitions, 30 in the Bundesliga, a huge amount of goals there. And this is a season where he clearly had a couple of injuries. It must have stretched into the second year maybe as well because he only plays 25 league games, but he still scores 33 goals in all competition. 23 in just under 30 games, well, 29 games and one substitute appearance, but he gets a 9.19 rating, which carries on the following year as he gets 41 in 51. So he's clearly had some injuries in the last few years. So if we have a look at his landmarks... Uh, we left off in 2024. You can see Bundesliga, uh, DFB Pokal, I think that's the German Cup, the German Super Cup, another Bundesliga. This Champions League here, the pinnacle of his time uh, at Bayern Munich. Well, to be fair, he's only won it once with Bayern Munich, but that's two Champions Leagues with Bayern Munich, two Champions Leagues with Manchester City uh, and several league titles along the way. A lot of awards. Uh, we won't spend too much time looking at those because there are so many of them. But if we look, uh, well, those are his competitions. We've seen those as well. In the other section, we left off in 2024. So since then, he was named um, Bayern Munich vice-captain in 2024. Broke the Bayern Munich record for assists in a season with 37 assists, which we didn't dwell on, but that is enormous the number of assists he's got was named captain in 2025 uh, and then named England captain in 2026. Uh, broke the England record for most goals, getting his 54th goal in the match against Italy at the age of 21. He is England's all-time top goal scorer at 21. Unbelievable stuff that he's managed to do that. So we should check in on England as well if we have a quick look at their senior squad matches from 2024. You can see in the um, European Championship, 3-2 win, two goals there, 2-1 over Sweden, 2-1 over Turkey, so he gets another goal. Croatia dispatched in the second round. In the quarterfinal, a 1-0 win, he scores the only goal to put England into the semi-final, where they somehow lose. He gives them the lead against Ukraine in the European Championship semi-final, but two goals for Bezadin in four minutes in the second half, send them to defeat. They are unable to make it past Ukraine. Very frustrating that that has happened. His goal scoring form though, fantastic for England. He gets so many of them in all these different games. I'm just trying to see if there are any matches he gets a huge number. In the World Cup, the following year, 3-1 uh, victory against Japan. He scores the opening goal there. Then a 7-0 win with four goals in a game against Ecuador. Uh, Harry Kane scores against Cameroon to get them the perfect record. But then against the USA, Giancaldo Jr. tries to save them with an 85th minute equaliser. He scores the first penalty for England. But then Mount, Sancho and Foden all miss penalties as England are knocked out by the United States. A famous win for the USA, but a dreadful result for England. Um, but then the following year, in the Nations League semi-final, it's a 2-1 defeat to Belgium. Uh, no Jane Caldo Jr. in the team. This is when he must have been injured. And then a 4-1 win over France in the third-place playoff. Or maybe he just didn't play in that game, because 
he's fit for the next match. Maybe he just comes back and scores the two goals, but a little bit odd that. And in the current European Championship, which we will be able to check on soon, two goals in the first game and then a couple more goals over the next two as well to give them the perfect record in the group. So overall, he's in a nice place. But what we need to do now is go forward and have a look at how he's doing with Spurs in the future. So I'll see you in just a second. So with Tottenham in his first season, they have a great start to life. They get a nice 7-0 win in the Friendly Cup semi-final. They do win that competition and you can see their league form absolutely fantastic. This is it before he joins. This is it after he joins. It couldn't be more clear cut. And he also scores a penalty against Arsenal in only his second competitive game for the club. It is worth noting that Spurs did win their first title um, since this game would have started about three years before he joined, but they then finished in about third and then fifth before he joins the club. So they are not the dominant team in English football before he joins. But they do kick off with a 3-1 win over Burnley. They do lose 4-1 to Manchester City, which isn't ideal, but their form, uh, bearing in mind they're in the Europa League as well, and he opted to join Spurs despite them being in the Europa League, which is incredible, really, that the game has done that. Um, but you can see their form doing pretty well, losing to Villa, losing to Palace, uh, but getting nice wins along the way. He's clearly scoring quite a few goals, wins 4-0 against Man United as well at home. Uh, their Europa League campaign never really in danger. They do make it to the EFL Cup semi-final first leg, a good 2-0 win, uh, followed up by a 3-1 win over Fulham. Um, their form, absolutely fantastic. A few defeats along the way in the Premier League, but they get through in the FA Cup fifth round and then win the EFL Cup final against Liverpool on penalties. A really good result. Uh, he scores the opening goal of the game and then in the penalty shootout gets the first goal too. In the Europa League knockout stages, he scores three goals against Lille to help send them out. They do go out against Arsenal in the FA Cup, which isn't ideal. But they carry on in the Europa League against Schalke, getting nice wins. And then in the semi-finals, beat Chelsea 4-0 in the first leg and then 2-1 at home. And in the Europa League final, they are beaten by Inter Milan. But they do win the Premier League. And as you can see, they lost about five games in their league season. But they won everything. Very few draws outside of that. And it does deliver them another Premier League title. Now, the following year, you can see how well this starts. They do win the Club World Cup, being Bayern Munich 3-0, his former team. He scores a goal there. Then Boca Juniors 4-2. And then Manchester City 2-0. A very nice way to pick up some silverware. They also win the Community Shield 2-1 against Arsenal. Perfect start to the season, really. This draw to Everton aside. Lose to Atletico Madrid and then lose to Man City in the league. But they keep going in every competition, doing absolutely sensationally. Making it to the... League Cup semi-final, 3-0 win, followed up by a 1-0 draw, but that still gets them over the line. Lose to Lazio, but then beat Arsenal in the Cup final. He scores the winning goal in this Cup final to beat Arsenal. After a 90th minute equaliser, he scores an extra time to give them the win. Um, and in the Champions League knockout stages, they're actually knocked out by Lazio, so that's not ideal. But still going in the FA Cup, nice 1-0 win over United, followed up by a 3-1 win. Um, against Everton. Now, I'm pretty sure they finished second in the league somehow in the Premier League despite this sensational run of form. We will double-check the years that they win the Premier League title in a minute, um, but I'm pretty sure they're pushed a bit too close there. Now, they then lose the Community Shield to Arsenal on penalties. A little bit unfortunate there. He misses in the penalty shootout, um, but their league form fantastic once more, only losing in the AFL Cup. Then they lose to uh, Liverpool and Manchester City only just, but brilliant form outside of that. Getting through against Wolfsburg in the Champions League knockout stages, 3-2 and then 2-1. Uh, win in the FA Cup quarterfinal as well. 3-2 defeat at Anfield, but they score twice and it means that when they play at home and win 2-1, they do manage to go through. Giancaldo Jr., early goal there, helping them through. They beat United 2-1 in the FA Cup. And then in the Champions League semi-final, a 3-1 win over PSG, followed up by a 3-1 away win, uh, away, away defeat, sorry, which PSG actually win on penalties. So a little bit 
of a shame they haven't managed to make it all the way. But they do win the FA Cup final, another final against Arsenal. And he scores a winning goal again, confirming himself as a Spurs legend along the way. They do win the title in that year as well. And then the following year, do pick up the Community Shield again, scoring the winning goal in the final, becoming a recurring theme. Few defeats in the league, or draws and defeats in the league, which isn't ideal. You can see their season sort of falling apart a little bit here, with several defeats on the books. But they beat Lyon 3-0 away from home, 4-1 at home, to keep charging through the Champions League. One all draw at Anfield, followed up by a 2-1 victory at home. Late goals, helping them stay in the competition and go through. But then PSG smashed them 3-0 in the first leg. And a 4-1 win at home is not enough for them as PSG go through on away goals. So unfortunate they couldn't get a goal in the last 20 minutes or so. But it is another FA Cup final win. And I think they finished third in the league this year. So that's not great. But they are doing well in the FA Cup, I guess. And now heading into his fifth year with Spurs. You can see lose to Arsenal. They keep playing Arsenal in cup finals. Uh, in the Community Shield there. League campaign not doing utterly brilliantly. There's quite a few draws, defeats along the way. Uh, but they do beat Sevilla 3-1 in the Champions League and then 3-0. Also managed to get past Liverpool again. They keep knocking them out of the Champions League. They've done it once more here with a 90th minute winner. In the semi-final, it's Juventus. A 1-0 win away from home and a 3-2 defeat at home means they get knocked out on away goals. 82nd minute winner for Juventus. So no Champions League victory for Spurs this time around. And that takes us to the current season. Uh, so he has failed to win it. Now you can see here in the current Premier League they have won the title once more. Just 16 goals clear of Chelsea. But look at that spread. Five teams within two points of winning the title on the final day is incredible. Um, but you can see it's been Arsenal and Spurs the whole time he's been at the club. The title changing hands every year, but they have managed to retain it. Uh, or, no, they haven't retained it. They've just won it again here, 32-33. Uh, but Jen Caldo Jr. absolutely smashing the goal-scoring charts. If we look at his career stats with Spurs, 32 goals in 38, 21 in 38, 26, 33, and then 30. This is biggest season here, but he has got a 9 over a nine-point rating four of his last five seasons, or three of his last four seasons, rather. Um, and a huge number of goals when you look at all of the competitions down at the bottom, uh, getting over 40 in most seasons, 47 that year. Um, but fantastic stuff for him. And if we look at his milestones over this period of time, from when he left Bayern Munich, you've got a Carabao Cup, Premier League, Club World Cup, so he's won three Premier League titles with Spurs now, three Carabao Cups, uh, three FA Cups as well, and the Club World Cup. So he's done reasonably well with his trophy haul, but no Champions League. So he's only got four Champions League titles at the moment. He's going to have lots of awards in terms of competition, not bothered about that. Um, we won't look at his awards either. Uh, you can see he was signed by Spurs on a free transfer. Uh, and then in his other, from where we left off last time with Spurs, you can see with England, name the England captain, lots of records being broken for England. Uh, and then for Spurs as well, he's going to get all of these. Record for assists broken with 21. He was named the Spurs captain in 2029, the first year he was at the club. Um, doing well for England as well. Highest average rating in a season of 9.17. Uh, breaks his own record for assists with 30 goals. Uh and then 31, then 37, keeps on breaking those records. Broke the England record for goals in a season. He's done that before. Uh, fastest goal after nine seconds against Benfica. And broke the England record for most appearances with his 136th cap at 28. And then scores after nine seconds against France as well in the Nations League. So he is having a fantastic time of it, it has to be said. And if we look at the England record as well... Um, we're just having a look to see how he gets on here. I think when we left off, was this where we left off? Or was it the year, yeah, year before? Where well, they did beat Ukraine 4-1, two goals there. Getting through to the second round where they beat Poland 2-1. He scores in that game. Then Wales, he scores a hat-trick 3-1, knocking them out in the quarterfinal. But then they lose to Belgium to a first-minute goal. 
So again, they failed to win a major competition, which is really frustrating. But their form doing pretty well as they make the Nations League semi-final a 2-0 defeat to Italy, though, followed by a 2-0 defeat by Belgium in the final. They just can't compete at that level. And then in the World Cup, a 6-1 victory over Peru, four goals in that game. A 4-0 win over Iran takes them to five. And then a 6-1 win over Wales takes them to eight goals in the group stage alone. And then they get knocked out in the third round to Argentina, a 1-0 defeat. Lauturo Martinez, the well, no longer a wonder kid, but was a wonder kid, doing all of the damage. So another failure um, to win a major competition. And it just keeps happening. Look, 4-0 um, against Poland, 3-2 against Georgia, 3-0 against Belgium, 3-0 against Denmark, 2-1 against Russia, but in the semi-finals, beating 3-1 in extra time despite his goal. 90th minute equaliser, and then two goals in extra time, knocking England out the semi-final stage. He keeps suffering heartbreak with England, and then they lose 3-1 to Italy. In the semi-final. So not a great time to be an England fan this. It has to be said. Uh, he is just not able to do enough. And if we go back and just look at his profile here. You can see he's got 138 goals in 137 games for England. And not won a major competition with them. Uh, which is just crazy that that is something that's happened. But here's his biography. You can pause the screen if you want to take a little bit of a closer look at this. But 186 league games, 142 goals. Uh, several competitions along this time and he's now won 39 competitions throughout his career he has at least won the Nations League with England in 2023 so it's not over yet and he is only 28 years old there's probably still 12 years or so left to go but he's had five years with Spurs so I am going to terminate his contracts it doesn't look like he's going to leave on his own will he's got four more years left here but he's in the prime of his career I want to see where he goes next so um, we will take a look at that. You can see Spurs here, the impact he had when they finished third, then fifth after their title win. He was signed and they won three titles after that, doing extremely well with Unai Emery in charge. Um, so that will be it for today's episode. Only nine years in total, I think, not ten. But that means next time we will end this series. So you will see every year right up to the end of his career. If there's anything that I'm not showing you, do let me know down in the comments. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. And make sure to subscribe for the final part tomorrow. But until next time, see ya.